Hey guys, it is Liberty here from Spirit Move Ministries. It is awesome to be on with you. Um, yes, still in Texas. Um, see my shirt? This tells you I'm still in Texas. Uh, I probably wouldn't be wearing this around in Florida right now is would be my guess. <gasps> Maybe I would dress up nicer if I was speaking and there was air conditioning, but I would not go around like this in a flannel um, shirt unless I was still in Texas because it is not warm here yet. Well, it kind of does what it feels like. If you guys live here, you know, it's kind of bipolar. So uh, you have three days of freezing um, and then you'll have a day of like 72 and really humid and overcast or whatever. So um, it really hasn't found itself to be quite warm yet. And so, um, yep, we're still wearing long sleeves. A lot of people are still wearing long sleeves here. Um, anyway, you guys, there's so much going on. I really can't go into all of it. You need to go to the website and look at spiritmoveministry.co and see what we have going on and um, just look at the stuff there, okay? Um, or go to Spirit Move Ministry on Facebook. I know some of you guys don't have Facebook. You don't like it. I understand. I don't like it either. But it's a ministry tool. And so um, usually on the community page um, here on YouTube um, or Instagram, you have to follow my personal page though because I don't have a Spirit Move Instagram. Um, you guys, I'm not real big on the social media stuff, so I don't want to keep up with 10 different things. And um, I, I do have moderators that do things, but in general, I don't want to have to deal with it. So um, some, some areas have not gotten all big about, like Instagram, even though I think Instagram's great and way better than Facebook. Um, I haven't really promoted myself on Instagram. I haven't made a big deal about it because I have like all these subscribers on YouTube and I don't even know. 13 or 14,000 people follow my Facebook, which is not that many compared to how many actually follow me. Um, and it's like 2,000 on Instagram. So I don't care. I'm not doing this for followers. So, okay. Um, I have a serious dream that I had about Houston and I'm about to release it. And I'm so, so excited to release this. Um, as you know, uh, I was there and I did a revival and I did four services for Sweetwater Church. They invited me to come in and speak. And um, we had an amazing time in the glory, you guys. There's no words. Uh, the pastor was wrecked for like days. He will tell you. He was like wrecked for days. And so um, we had an amazing <clears throat> cold air, sorry. Uh, an amazing time and um, it was awesome and so um, in my conversations with the Lord on okay what all were you doing there what are we doing okay times and seasons it's what I do I'm always talking to God about okay what's up what's happening what's next where where am I going what am I doing <clears throat> sorry it's never ending you guys if I don't have freezing cold air on me I will sweat to death because when I release a word I will sweat to death so but it dries my throat out um and so, but there's big stuff coming for Houston. This is going to sound like a very simple dream, but it is not a simple dream, you guys. Um, you know, 80% of my life happens at night of what he tells me, what he shows me, how he tells me to pray for people when, when I receive prophecies and all that. And um, I also received another word for Pensacola. If you didn't know, I've released a couple of words over Pensacola. Um, I will be releasing that. That has to be a different video. Okay. Um, so basically we went to Houston and we did the, the four services, the three days of revival, and we had an amazing time and, um, all kinds of breakthrough, um, de demon possessed people being set free. I mean, it was amazing. And so, um, as I'm talking to God about, okay, where are you going with these places you're taking me, these pivotal places to do revival or release certain things? And um, so then I had a dream about Houston. And so um, this is what God has. So he's so funny too, because he gave me um, the word, the prophecy about the warning against um, that punishments coming to the complacent Christians. Uh, he's not coming back for a body that dips in and dips out. You're either in or you ain't. There's two choices. There's two choices. There's no halfway Christians. 
because he's going to say, I didn't know you. Yep, I'm throwing it in there, you guys. Just track with me because the dream is so short. It would be like the shortest video of my life. So i got to give you a lead up. You need to listen, though, okay? Um, and so this all is connected to everything that he's been saying, honestly, to me for three or four years. He started giving me prophecies about the body of Christ and the seasons of shaking and all that in 2019. And so um, I release what he tells me and um, <clears throat> very honored to do it. Um, I don't think everybody wants to hear what I have to say because uh, religious people and complacent Christians don't want to be told they need to be on fire. They don't know that they're not. Sometimes people just don't know until you have to get wrecked and he wrecks you. Amen. And then you'll know, okay, something's, I need some more fire or something. Okay. And so, um, with that word that I released that prophecy that God was saying, he is dead serious in this season. He's cleansing his body. The, the Levites and priests have to be clean first. We can't run the thing and be the body. If we are not even holy, if we're not right, Amen. Um, and so he's getting us to the point of being perfect. No, never making a mistake. No, we're still human beings on the earth, but there's a difference. Okay. It's a heart issue. Um, he knows if he knows if you're dipping in and out, like you really don't have a heart for him. You really don't want to live the saved life which is not just salvation. Salvation is the first step. It's the beginning, not the end. There's a whole life of sanctification with the Holy Spirit's help that you walk through until the day you die or we get raptured out of here. And so, which is not gonna be happening for quite a while. I'm not getting into that discussion, you guys. Nope, there's a whole lot of work to do. We ain't going nowhere until it's done. Uh, until the souls are brought in, we're not going nowhere. That's what we're here for. Okay. So let me just throw that out there. Okay. Moving along the dipping in and out of Christians. Now on that prophecy, the Lord had told me how COVID will return a form of what happened in COVID because, uh, it came God. Yes, it was produced by evil people, but God allowed it to wake up the body. It was beginning to take you into a new era of getting, getting a grip, getting your act together, wake up, get out of the four walls, uh, go get them. You know, don't wait for people to come to you to get saved because you're so awesome. They're going to walk in your building because you're so cool and say they want Jesus. No, go get them. And so that's what our ministry does. We go get them. Well, that can irritate religious people, but it, I don't care. I'm going to do what I'm called to do. We go get people. And when God says, go there, we go there. And we do what he's called us to do. And we, we make his glory and his presence and deliverance and freedom and salvation available wherever he tells us to go. And so um, I'm not going to get going on all that. I've already released a lot of words about that since 2020. Okay. Um, but the thing is, you guys, um, let me give you an example before I give you the dream about Houston, because come on, Houston people be listening because this is big for you. Okay. Okay. This is a big deal, what God wants to do. And um, with the dipping in and out, what God's saying is, people are seeking me when stuff's happening. But when everything's great, we think. Um, we become complacent. We're not praying as much as we were. We're not um, uh, worried about getting to spend time with God as much as we were when it was taken from us, everybody's like, Oh man. Okay. So here's an example. And then I'm, we're going to go into the dream. And this is all, all these words and dreams are connected you guys. Okay. And then I'm going to talk about the other dream. You need to go back and watch the last two words so you can track with in the spirit, what God is doing and saying for the body of Christ in these times and seasons. Okay. So, um, he basically, uh, was like, okay, you guys, no more dipping in and out. So here's an example. During COVID, when everything was on lockdown, um, somebody felt, a ministry in Oklahoma felt called to do a big tent event. It was their very first one. They set it up on Cross on the Prairie there in Oklahoma, a giant tent that could hold 
you know, thousands of people. Well, a couple thousand. And um, just a giant tent. And they're like, we're going to do something outside. I want to do it. I had never met these people, um, but they followed my ministry. And so they contacted me and said, hey, we want you to come and, you know, do this revival. And I was like, sure, you know. And um, because I was already doing things everywhere, even though everybody was on lockdown. I was going from coast to coast to every beach doing beach services. We had mass salvations. We had people getting baptized. We were baptizing people by the hundreds and um, they were getting delivered. We would pray with people. This was all during COVID. Pray with people for hours. So when people say, how do you pray with people? How do you never go to the bathroom? I do not know. Ask Jesus. But I have went 12 hours on the beach, laying hands on people, praying, baptizing, casting out demons, healing the sick for like 12 hours straight on my feet and never going to the bathroom. So I don't know. It's all Jesus and it's the Holy Ghost. I don't even know. I'm probably just absorbing it back into my body because I'm dying of thirst. I don't even know. Okay, so here's the thing. God's miraculous and he just keeps, keeps us going. So we were already doing that. God had already told me to do that. Um, our church was shut down. We were kicked out of the school we were in. And um, I was just like, okay, this is, this is not gonna, this is not gonna work. Like, this is not gonna work. So, okay. And we had a lot of people getting saved and all this stuff happening. And I was like, this is not gonna work. Like, okay. And then that's how God ended up calling me to hit all the co coast to coast to all the beaches. And we had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people show up because they could not go to church. They were in lockdown. And if there was something available to them that seemed kind of safe because it was outside, they were showing up. We had many people showing up. I mean, people were so hungry, it was crazy. And they were getting saved and baptized. And I mean, it was crazy, you guys. It was an amazingly crazy. And so moving along, I get invited to go be the, one of the main speakers at this revival in Oklahoma. Well, my, one of my main nights I was going to be doing, and some of you guys know, you, if you follow me and you're from that area, you were probably there. I was doing an impartation service on the one night. And so um, if we had a huge crowd come for the impartation service. I don't even know, 15, 1600 people came so that I could pray for them. And so... Um, I had people come through the line and there people are funny. You guys, there was, there's so much glory and people are goofy. I love you. You're amazing. They come through the line and they're like, I've been following you. And I came, I drove all the way from three States over so I could see you in person. And like, that's what was happening. And this is what the Lord is talking about with the dipping in and out is he was like, a lot of that has left. Now the Asbury thing is amazing that was prophesied over it's been prophesied and it's continuing to be prophesied over those generations basically the the people that are youth now and gen z they are that is their calling and most likely they're going to way outdo all of us you guys they're going to wreck it and they're going to make us look like lazy bums and i really do believe that lazy bums and so um here we go to oklahoma all these people, they had driven and where it was located was kind of in the middle of nowhere, but it was, you know, not really, but like 30, 35 minutes outside of Tulsa. And so there was very limited hotels out there. So there was people coming and sleeping in their cars on the property by the tent so that they wouldn't miss a service. And we had so many people. I mean, I think I prayed on people for six hours straight for the impartation service because so many people were there and they just kept coming. People would get off work and they would get to the service an hour late, but they were they would show up and they we, we had golf carts um, and little whatever drivers that would go down to where all the parking was and pick up people and haul them up there because there was so many. And um, that's what was happening. 
And the Lord said, where did that go? It's not just for the youth and the young adults. Yes, it's been prophesied over them, but we have to keep wanting that the same. It's not, oh, it, well, that's for the younger people, you know, we'll sit here on our front porch on our rockers and zone out and watch them. No, no. Are you kidding me? If I'm not raptured out of here, I'll probably be doing what I'm doing till I'm dead or 90. Eight. I don't even know. Hopefully I'll live that long. I'm just saying, I'm pretty sure I won't be here. Let's not get into that. I'm not giving you any times and any dates or years, but I'm telling you my lifetime, 100%. I say that as no joke. My lifetime, he is returning. I am going to say that. It might offend you that it's not tomorrow. But we have a job to do. Okay, moving along. So this is the example. This is what God's talking about. So then I have the dream about all those ministries beating their own drum and doing their own thing. And the Lord's like, no, enough of that. Everybody needs to be on board. You are one body. This is going to happen one way. By my spirit, says the Lord. Um, not by religion, not by theology and doctrine. And I had one person ask that. You can email us in reference to that. Well, we have to have doctrine. Okay, I don't have my Bible with me. The Bible. People can argue with me all day long. Say what you want to say. I'm speaking for the Holy Ghost. The Bible is inspired by the Holy Ghost through men and it is it is 100% authority. And so there is no when when they're talking about doctrine and Paul's talking about this that and the other, he's talking about other people coming up with what they come up with and then us being deceived and falling into it. It doesn't mean he's saying we have to have some kind of special doctrine. No. We have the Bible. The Bible is, is where our faith is. It's where everything is. It's where we receive from. It's where, it's our food. It's our revelation. And let me just add this. The Bible is not always face value. I'm not getting into that either. There's just th only three verses in the entire Bible that even sound and hint like they would restrict females from being in leadership out of the entire Bible. But people don't know how, what those verses actually mean. You have to actually study the Bible and learn it. What was really meant. Paul had women leading things. Deborah was a judge in the Old Testament. They didn't even go to war without her telling them what to do. The leader of the military went to her for counsel and said, Hey, I need you to, what, what should I do? Like They went to her for everything. She was a female. Go through the Bible and look, okay? I'm not getting into that either. I'm making the point, religion is face value. Religion is stale. And it's not, it's not going to work, you guys. And so, revival is not religion. Revival is not a doctrine. It's not a set of rules. It's not a certain way of doing things. Revival is... Cleansing, repentance, salvation, people getting radically saved and getting set free and getting healed, miracle signs and wonders, that's revival. Is a soul being going from darkness and, and hell to knowing the light of Christ, seeing the light of Christ, accepting the gift that's been done for them on the cross, and then everything that happens after that. Um, and revival had to start in the body of Christ. And this is why I've, I've released everything I've released all this time because God has had me intercede and speak over and prophesy about the body of Christ first. That's what he's called me to. So that you're ready and you're not lazy and you're not religious and you're not complacent and you're not going to be one of the ones punished for dipping in and out. We don't want to be guilty of that, you guys. So, back to revival. Everybody was so hungry when we were in lockdown. And um, my examples are proof of that. But the Lord said he needs his people to get back to being hungry. And so, we went and we did this revival in Houston. And 
um, I kept asking the Lord after I'm like, okay, what was up with that? Um, wh what, why did you need me to go do that? The things that he had me speak, the things that I did for each service, like he, there was like a certain thing he had me doing. And, um, he said, you were preparing the way you were ripping over, open the atmosphere and preparing the way for my glory. And I was like, okay. So then I have this dream. Are you Houston people ready? Okay. So in or all of Texas, all of everybody. Okay. Um, in this dream, I just was, I was standing there and I was in the middle of a city and I stood there and I, I looked around and I was, I had to think for a minute. I'm like, where am I? And then it be, started to become clear. And then I began to feel like, okay, I've been here before. I've done a revival here before. And I looked around and I was like, I'm in Houston. And I was standing there in the street in the city of Houston. And, um, then next thing you know, I look down the road and I see lines of people lining up. And then it, it came to my mind, my, or I had a revelation of, I was going to be doing a revival service that night that there was some kind of revival going on and whatever it was, I was speaking that night. And so, um, all of a sudden I see all these people lining up and they were lining up around the block and guess what time it was? It was 9 a.m. The service was not till 7 p.m. And I, I, in the dream, I stood there and I watched all these people line up down the street, getting in line at 9 a.m. in the morning to get into revival. And it was all happening in Houston. And I stood there and I watched it and I was like, wow, Houston is hungry. Revival is coming to Houston. Boom, dream over. And so after I had the dream, I got up and I wrote it down in the middle of the night and I was like, okay, Jesus, what's going on? And he was like, revival is coming to Houston. He said, I'm getting ready to pour out my spirit majorly in Houston. Now let's backtrack. Revival is not just a cool service. Revival is the Holy Spirit coming in, which can start to manifest with exposure. Um, finding out your spouse is living in sin. I, I know that you guys are like, that's just terrible. No, it's reality. Um, that's revival. It doesn't feel good, but it's revival. It's God beginning to unearth and shift and bring everything to the surface that has to be cleansed away and moved out of his way. First of all, from his body in Houston. So brace yourselves, Christians in Houston, get ready. Make sure that you're postured with humility and you are submitted to the Lord and you're repentant and you're hungry and you want revival and you better check your holiness and you better check your walk because that's the first stage of revival is cleansing and deliverance. And it's gonna happen in us, or those of you that are the body of Christ in that area, or Texas in general, actually. Um, he's gonna come and it's gonna manifest in the church first because he will not, he, we can't have people come in to a dirty church. You can't be a Christian and you can't be a leader and get people saved when you're not living it. Because what are you getting them saved from? You're telling them to accept Christ. Why? You did, but you're not living it. You're still living in sin. You're not living pure and holy before the Lord. So it, this is the thing. Jesus needs us to be the example first. So Houston, I'm here to tell you right now, revival is coming to Houston. But the first stages are about to hit and it's going to be cleansing first. He's going to bring cleansing to his body. He's going to wake people up. He's going to expose things that are ugly and get them out of his way and give people opportunity to repent and get right so that they can actually lead the way. He can't have leaders leading that, that really can't promote salvation and deliverance and freedom from the, through the cross when they're not living it. They're living a lie. So really the salvations are numbers, but the person leading it and releasing the gospel and the message are not even holy. And so those days are done. So he's on his way to you, Houston, and he's going to do a mighty work and brace yourself and get ready 
because the Holy Ghost is going to come in. He's going to prepare to cleanse his house officially and move things out of the way so revival can actually come. And he said what we went and did there for those four services was preparing the way for that in Houston. And what an honor. I was very happy to go do it. Whatever my call is and whatever my part is in whatever God's doing, I'm happy to participate. Um, I don't need to be a part of the revival later. Yes, in the dream I was speaking, but that doesn't mean it has to be me. It could be anybody. It could be lots of different things. It could be every church. It could be every college campus. I don't even know. It could be everywhere, anywhere on the street corner. Um, it doesn't have to be at a place under a specific speaker. Revival is coming your way. And when God does the first stages and you guys are ready to receive them, people are going to be coming and lining up around the block in the morning hours for night services at Revival, wherever they're happening in Houston. Um, it's just a picture of what's going to be coming to the city of Houston and that surrounding area. And then it's just going to spread into Texas. You guys know how it goes. When revival happens like that, um, just like with Brownsville, people come in, they get radicalized in the glory, and then they take that away and they go and they start a ministry or they go and they release that fire into their church and their church becomes completely different and they become legit in, in, in a real end time church, amen, that is on fire and doing what they're supposed to. Um, there will be no more denominations in the end times. Go back and watch my last word, my last warning dream. Um, here's the thing. We're all one body. We're all called to do this one way, and it's all his way. He has one drum beat. He has one sound. And Jesus mandated what that sound was. He said, this is what you're going to go do. Save the lost, heal the sick raise the dead, cast out demons, you know, he told us this is one body. That's what we do. We all do it. We're all supposed to be doing the same thing with the power of the Holy Ghost because you cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you this right now. Without the Holy Spirit, it's just religion. Okay, you guys, Houston, revival is coming your way. Brace yourself seriously because the first stage is always going to be cleansing and repentance to move stuff out of the way for the glory to come on a massive scale. And I'm prophesying that right now. Revival is coming to Houston on a massive scale. The work is beginning now. It, it's right now. It's happening and it's going to be like a tidal wave. That's the only way I can explain it. Brace yourself and make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to. You're ready. Amen. Um, if you live in that area, Make sure you're right with the Lord and you can position yourself to be a part of bringing in the end time harvest in that region or that city or this state, whatever. Amen. Okay, let's pray right now for Houston. Lord, we just lift up Houston to you and we declare that everything you have said shall come to pass. Houston is, is going to not just see revival to be put on the map or to have numbers or to have cool things happening and make it on the news, but you're going to bring revival to your people first, Lord. And Houston, you're saying, I receive it, Lord, and I will be whoever you need me to be. And I will be used for the end times. And then Lord, send your glory and your revival to manifest in such a way where people will line up in the morning to get into night services. God, I declare that spirit of revival. I declare the tidal wave of your glory is coming upon Houston right now. And you are preparing to do a mighty work. And I declare over every person in the body of Christ in Houston that his anointing will be upon you. His fire will be upon you. And you will have his strength because he wants to use you in the seasons ahead. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, I love you guys. You're awesome. I could say so much more, but I'm not going to. Um, have a blessed day and get ready, Houston. Brace yourselves. Revival is already on its way. Amen and amen.